Hindsight is 2020. Normally we can look back and we can see patterns or events that happen to cause a certain situation. This is especially true when we look at our own history, the history of man, the history of humanity. We can look back and see why certain wars happened or why certain events took place. And needless to say, over the last few years, we have learned more and more and more about our governments and our elite. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and give us a like. I also ask that you check out our producer, Tiffany Monroe's website down below. Again, she is a Reiki master here in Atlanta and she runs a nonprofit. She has courses that you can get involved with or if you're from out of town, you can always contact her and work something out with her privately. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce and today we're gonna talk about the death of Gelly. Started, I have to point out that I am aware that as you're watching this, this is the day after our elections. However, I am filming this a week prior to the elections because we will actually be out of town this week. So I wanted to get all my videos done before we left. So if you're wondering why I haven't mentioned the elections and the outcome of the elections, that's why. So who was Gelly and why was her death so mysterious? Well, Gelly was the niece or the half niece of Adolf Hitler. Gelly's mother was Adolf Hitler's older sister. Now her mother, Hitler's older sister, was about 10 years older than Hitler. Now, as I said, Gelly was his half niece. So that means that her mother was his half sister, meaning that they only shared one parent. Going forward though, I'm just going to refer to Gelly as his niece. In my opinion, I don't really think it matters if you're half or whole. That just never really made sense to me. If you share a parent, then that's your sibling. Now it is well known that Hitler was estranged from his family. However, as time was running up to his election, that fateful election, he started to communicate again with his older half-sister. Angela, Hitler's sister, had two daughters, one of whom obviously was Gelly. Gelly was born on the 4th of June, 1908. Now, when Gelly was only two years old, her father died. Her mother ran some boarding houses and did a few jobs here and there to support Gelly and her sister without the income of her husband. However, in 1925, fate took over and Hitler asked his sister Angela to come to Munich with her two daughters and work as his housekeeper. At this point, Hitler had a gorgeous nine bedroom apartment in Munich, as well as a mountain or country home. Gelly arrived in Munich with her mother and sister when she was 17 years old. From the get go, it became apparent to everyone around them that Hitler was obsessed with his niece, Gelly. Gelly called him Uncle Alf. I'm assuming her sister also called him Uncle Alf, but Gelly is the focus of this story. In fact, many accounts say that it creeped people out how obsessed he was with Gelly. He brought Gelly along with him everywhere he went. Not only is it weird enough that her uncle was 19 years older than her, but he was also her uncle. And when I say that Hitler brought Gelly everywhere with him, I mean literally everywhere. Gelly was at all his political meetings. He constantly took her to the movies. She was by his side the whole time. Gelly apparently took an interest in singing, and so her uncle, Alf, Alfie, 
decided to pay for her to have singing lessons. Now, of course, this isn't odd. I myself am an, am an aunt, and if my niece or my nephew really wanted to take singing lessons, I would do everything I could to ha ha make that happen for them. However, this idea of singing lessons comes up later on in the story with Gelly and Adolf Hitler. And if things weren't weird enough, by 1928, Hitler decided that Gelly's mother needed to go be the housekeeper in his mountain home. So he sent her mother away, but kept Gelly at the apartment in Munich. Around this time too, Gelly started to develop a relationship with Hitler's so chauffeur, but of course Hitler got furious when he found out and forced Gelly to end the relationship. This would not be the only time that Gelly would have a relationship with a man her own age and, and not related to her, that her uncle would end in a very jealous and possessive way. Now, rumors were starting to spread around the inner circles of Hitler's party. They feared that there were some SA going on or A-B-U-S-E. I believe there probably was. Sorry, I, I can't say that word on YouTube anymore, so I will spell it out for you. But on the 18th of September of 1931, a huge argument broke out between Gelly and her uncle. It seemed that Gelly wanted to go to Vienna to study music, to, to get more into her singing. And she also had a man in Vienna that she wanted to marry. After the argument, Hitler left the apartment because he had to go and do a political meeting. And it was later found that Gelly was left dead in the apartment with a gunshot to her chest. Many people noted that there was also a broken nose as if Gelly had been punched in the face. It is also believed that Gelly was possibly pregnant. Now, this can't be confirmed because after her death, Hitler ruled that there would be no autopsy done on her body. However, people do believe that if she was pregnant, it was either by Hitler himself or this man that she wanted to marry in Vienna. Either scenario was not good for Hitler. His niece carrying his own child definitely would not good, look good to his public image. And of course, the idea of her carrying another man's baby was not something that his jealous and possessive mind could handle. Gelly was only 23 years old when she lost her life. Now, the courts ruled that her death was a suicide, but many people do not believe this to be true. Many people believe that she was murdered by her uncle in a fit of rage. And a lot of occultists believe that this relationship with Gelly and her eventual death was part of a ritualistic sacrifice in order for Hitler to take the power he needed in Germany. Now, as I said in the beginning, hindsight is 2020. And over the last few years, we've learned more about SRA or Satanic Ritual, A-B-U-S-E. We now know that this type of stuff happens a lot, especially in political circles. And so this case is starting to come back up again in conversation. Like I said, most people believe that she did not commit suicide. For all intent and purposes, Gelly was a very happy girl. Apparently a few days before her death, she wrote a letter to a friend ex talking about her, her excitement and her joy for the future. That's not something somebody does if they are going to commit suicide. After her death, apparently Hitler went into a huge mourning phase. He hung portraits up of Gelly all over his apartment and left her room at his apartment just as it was. Allegedly, Hitler told many people that Gelly was the only woman he'd ever loved. And later on at the Nuremberg trials, it was said that Gelly's death was the start of Hitler's inhumanity, his genocide. So knowing what we know now about these types of things with hindsight being 2020, do you think that Gelly killed herself? Do you think her uncle murdered her in a fit of rage? Or do you think that Gelly Hitler's most prized possession 
was used as a sacrifice. Perhaps after that sacrifice, a possession took over Hitler that caused this whole global domination of the Third Reich. I know I said global domination because as we know now, the path of the Third Reich did not end with World War II. We're dealing with these same issues even today. We've seen this mysterious laptop from a certain family in politics, and we know what's on that laptop. We know about a particular island where certain things happened. We see deaths surrounding these powerful families that cause us to scratch our head in suspicion. And we also know that within these powerful families, such things as SA or sexual A-B-U-S-E is rampant. So what are your thoughts and your opinions on Geli's death? I hope that wherever Geli is, she is resting in peace. All right, guys, I hope everybody is safe and having a wonderful day. I can imagine in the future when this video will air that this day will hopefully be of great celebration, but I don't know. We'll just have to see. If you would like to purchase our opening song, you can follow the link below. Many thanks to Josh McKay for doing our music and also many thanks to Todd Roderick for helping me produce this video. If you would like to follow Todd Roderick's band, The Flying Mystics, please do so in the link below. All right, guys, I will talk to you soon and I hope you have a fantastically wonderful day. God bless.